Can doctors predict lifespan in stage 4 cancer? I will answer this question in regard to stage 4 diseases. As there are only 4 cancer stages, this is the most advanced one. Stage 4 refers to a type of cancer that is spread from its primary site, for example the breast or the prostate, to other organs. In this stage, the progression of the disease can only be halted, in the best cases with the new drugs even a couple of years. However, this hold unfortunately does not last forever, and most cancer drugs lose their effectiveness after months. It's always a tough question when your patient or their family asks how long. I'm usually reluctant to answer this question with a specific number or even a range. The reasons are manifold and to answer this I need to go back a little bit. What do doctors use as a basis to make an estimate of somebody's life expectancy in stage 4 cancer? We have lots and lots of data from clinical trials from which we can derive the lifespan of somebody being diagnosed for example with stage 4 breast cancer. How is this data generated? From clinical trials conducted by pharmaceutical companies that compare a new treatment they have invented against a classic treatment. This is the way new drugs are tested. Everything else would be unethical. You can't test two new drugs against each other. What if both of them are ineffective? This means in a clinical trial, let's say 100 patients with the same stage 4 cancer are divided into two groups. Half of them gets the new drug and the other half gets a classic standard of care. After giving them treatment and follow up for many months, in most cases even years, the study's result come out. And it turns out that the patient with the new drug combo lives between 12 to 24 months, with the median 50 months after being diagnosed. The median is the middle number in a set of data. It is more descriptive than the average. Now, let's go back to that first visit. I see the patient for the first time. His name is Peter Smith. He's 80 years old and comes in with a walker, along with his 78 year old wife. He has a history of a stroke from which he recovered very well. Lately he had trouble urinating and after a trip to the urologist, unfortunately he was diagnosed with stage 4 prostate cancer, meaning the cancer had already spread from his prostate into his bones. I discussed the treatment options and the patient wants to know how long he still has. What do you tell them? 50 months, 12 months, 24 months, I mean 12 months and 24 months make a huge difference. Can I even apply the results of the mentioned study to him? The average age of the patients in the study that tested the new treatment was 65, 15 years younger than he is and they were in much better shape, meaning their bodies were able to tolerate the treatment much better. I try to discuss these possibilities as openly as possible. What I don't want though is that patients get fixated on a certain number. 15 months. When you hear a number like this, irrelevant if it's 2 months or 2 years, you feel like a rug is being pulled from under your feet. Then you have to take into consideration that the patients I see come from all kinds of economic and professional backgrounds. We treat everybody as soon as they pass into adulthood with 18 years. My oldest patient so far was 96. Everybody has a different concept of numbers, just as everybody perceives the world differently. And I'm not sure how much numbers can help in a stressful situation like this. Most of us live every day as if we were immortal. And suddenly being confronted with a number 50 months, I don't think it does the situation justice. And I don't think it helps grasp the situation. And that is if the patients complete the whole treatment, let's say 6 rounds of the drug. Who says that he is mentally or physically able to do that? We had patients who developed anxiety attacks after being diagnosed, which hindered them from getting treatment in the first place. Also we had one patient who received radiotherapy and mild chemotherapy meant as an adjunct to the radiation that patient was getting. After one cycle of this low dose chemotherapy, the patient had an acute kidney failure and needed dialysis. That patient spent a couple of weeks in the ICU. At the first visit, after running diagnostic tests before treatment began, there were no reasons why the patient should have tolerated their treatment so poorly. I know of cases where doctors told the patient that he would be dead in 3 months. What did he do? He believed he had only 3 months left, sold his house, his car and all of his belongings, took out a huge credit and spent money like there was no tomorrow. The problem was however, that after 6 months, 9 months, 12 months, he was still alive. The treatment worked better than everybody, including his doctors, expected. 
and he started getting phone calls from his bank, asking him when he would start paying back his debt. He, however, quit his job many months ago. I have another example from my own family to emphasize how difficult it is to estimate somebody's life expectancy. I have relatives in the States and my sister and I went to visit them over the summer. Upon arrival, I visited one of our relatives, who had been in hospice care for a couple of months already due to a severe illness. As my sister and I took different flights and she arrived later that day, and as she was quite exhausted after the long travel, she called me to ask if it was urgent to see our relative or if there was still enough time to do it the next day. I didn't think it looked too bad and proudly told her that our relative seemed stable and she shouldn't worry, go to sleep and visit our relative the next day, refreshed. I could not have been more wrong. Our relative passed away that night and my sister did not have the chance to say goodbye, something I really regret. You may say now that I'm not a good doctor, but these cases have made me very cautious about overpromising and underdelivering. What I have often seen, however, in my work was that terminally ill patients who were bedridden and no longer had the strength or the will to eat or drink would hang on to life if they had a goal. In most cases, it is a visit from a relative who lives far away or due to other circumstances can come right away. This goal gives them immense strength. And after they saw that person who was dear to them, they pass away peacefully. What do I tell patients when they want to know? I inform them about whether I consider them having years, months or weeks left. This makes my estimate a bit more reliable, as they often have a lot of things to take care of. I also advise them to start a treatment, see how well they tolerate it and then wait for the first scan. After the first CT or MRI, we can say more about the aggressiveness of the disease and how well it responded to the treatment. Always I advise them to get their affairs in order or do things they have postponed for a long time, waiting for the right moment. The right moment is now.